All right, this is day one of our conics unit, and we are starting by reviewing a skill called completing the square. So here's the title of the lesson, and the directions say this. Rewrite each equation from standard form into vertex form by completing the square, and then identify the vertex. So let's break some of this down for a second. Standard form, and all of these, by the way, are quadratics. Standard form for a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. So all of these are in that form. It either equals y or it equals 0. We want to convert this into vertex form, which is this. And the reason why this is beneficial is, among other things, it helps us to graph. Because if you remember, if we had something like this earlier in the year when we were working on our parent functions, this would take the parent graph of x squared and it would move it to the right to, it would have a vertical stretch of 4 and it would move it up 5. And so this is a convenient way of easily seeing certain kinds of information that we can't see just by looking at an equation that's in standard form. And we're not revisiting quadratics in this unit. We will be working with equations of circles and we will be using this skill today when we talk about rewriting something in standard form into a circle equation. We will be using this skill later. So we're just revisiting it right now, something that um, you would have done in Algebra 2, practicing it in a previous familiar context so we can use it later in our conics lesson. So that's the point of today's work. So we're going to start with this example right here, and I'm just going to follow these steps one at a time. While I work the problem, I'll explain them. Step A says to set equal to 0 or y. Some of these are set equal to y. And you can see in this example that is already done. It is set equal to 0. The next step says to factor out A. I want you to add from x terms. Because we're not factoring it out from every single term, just this first group of x's. And you can see, boom, as soon as I put parentheses there and there's a plus a constant on the outside, it already kind of starts looking like this vertex form. There's a constant over here outside some parentheses. So I'm going to factor the a value out of here. Now this is not a GCF situation, greatest common factor. And here's what I mean. I'm not also factoring out an x that they have in common. Do not mess with the x's only factor out the a value, which happens to be 2. So my next step looks like this. Okay, so now I'm another step closer to my vertex form. I have a coefficient out here in front of my parentheses. So I've done that. So now the question becomes, how do I get from x squared plus 8x to something that looks like this, x minus h parentheses squared. And that's what this next step is going to do for us. It says take half of b and square it. Well, I should say these next two steps. So my b value is 8. So I'm going to come over here, take half of 8. That gives me 4. And then I'm going to square the 4. And that gives me 16. So I took half of b and squared it. This next step says add this to the perfect square trinomial. This is your x terms group. So we're trying to make this into a perfect square trinomial, which I'll explain more what that means once we get there. So I'm going to take this 16 and add it inside that group. So I've added it there. And then it says subtract it from C. C is the constant. In this case, it's the 30. And it says you might need to multiply by A, and here's why. It feels a lot like I just added 16 to the left side of this equation. Now remember that equations are in balance. The left side equals the right side. 
So if you go messing around with the left side, you have to balance that out somewhere to keep the equation equal. So if I've added 16 on the left side, I can balance it out by subtracting 16. Right? Add 16, subtract 16, they cancel each other out. But in this particular problem, I haven't really just added a 16. I've added two 16s, right? If Imagine I distributed this two through here. I really am adding two 16s, and that's 32. So I've really added 32 here. To keep this left side balanced, I'm going to want to subtract 32. So I've added 16 in the parentheses, and I've subtracted 32 outside the parentheses. All right, so the next step says to factor the perfect square. This trinomial is now something that we call a perfect square trinomial. A trinomial because there's three terms, and perfect square because the way we're about to factor it is going to give us something squared, so it'll be a perfect square. Um, all right, so looking just in this set of parentheses, I'm going to factor that trinomial. What multiplies to the last term and adds to the middle, and it's two fours. So I'm going to rewrite this as it's x plus 4 times x plus 4, which I can write as x plus 4 squared. And then bring that 2 out front, bring it down, and then combine 30 and 32. That gives me negative 2. That is the collecting like terms to get your k, and I factored the perfect square. So the reason why this method is called completing the square is it, when we didn't have the 16 here, when I just had a space that I was trying to fill, um, that we were looking for the missing piece that would make this a perfect square. So once I put that 16 there, I completed the square. I completed the squared group. And so that's why this method has that name. And then we're also being asked to identify the vertex. So the vertex is whatever's in the position of H and whatever is in the position of K. And in this case, that's going to be negative 4, negative 2. So I'm going to do number one for you and then ask you to pause the video and work number two. Now, I want you to notice one and two are grouped together because they actually both have an A value of one. So it'll be a little bit different from this example that we just did. But three and four both have A values. So they'll be just like this example we did here. So I'm going to do number one for you and then ask you to go ahead and finish two, three, and four. But I'll set you up for those before I ask you to pause the video. So let's look at number one. We start by making sure it's equal to zero or y, and it is. Then we factor out a from the x terms. So I like to start by just grouping them together. And the a value is one. It won't be beneficial to factor it out, so we don't have to do that. Now I'm going to take half of b and square it. So this is the same. It just so happens that b is the same as above. So this work is repetitive. So I'm going to take that 16 and add it inside my grouping here. And then whatever I add inside, I need to subtract outside to keep that left side balanced. Now we already know that we can rewrite that as x plus 4 squared, and then 12 minus 16 is minus 4. And my vertex is um, negative 4, so this is, remember, an insider's lie because the parent function is written with a minus, so that means to take the opposite of what's here, so minus 4. And then the k value is negative 4. So if I were to... Now I could now graph, even though I had it in standard form, now I can easily see how I would graph this. The vertex would be at negative 4, negative 4. There's no stretch or compress, and it would go, um, well, and then I would just draw it. There's no stretch or compress. So pause the video and try number 2 by yourself. Okay, here's my work. 
So go ahead and pause the video and check. I have x minus 6 quantity squared minus 41 equals 0, and the vertex is positive 6, negative 41. Pause the video if you feel like you made a mistake and you just want to look at this and compare your work to mine. Okay, I'm going to work through three for you and then have you pause the video and try number four. So we start out by grouping our x terms together, factoring out the a value, which is 3, If you need a quick division tutorial, 42 divided by 3, 3 goes into 4 one time, and into 12 four times. So this is minus, sorry, 14x. I'm going to leave some space for what I'm about to add there, and then I have the minus 17 on the end. Okay, so now I'm going to take my b value and divide it by 2, and then take that value and square it, positive 49. I'm going to add that here. And then I'm going to subtract it off here. But remember, I don't have just one 49. I have three 49s. So 50 times 3 is 150 take one off is 147, or if you want to see that math by hand, 49 times 3, that is 27, carry your 2, 12 plus 2, 147. So I added 147, and now I have to subtract 147. Now we're going to factor this trinomial, so what multiplies to positive 49 and adds to negative 14. And that is two negative sevens. So I'm going to write this as x minus seven, parentheses squared, and then minus. So both of these numbers have the same sign, so that will keep the sign. Add the number parts: 17 plus 147. That's 14. Carry your one. That's six. So negative 164, and then the vertex is positive seven negative 164. We're taking the opposite of what's inside. And one quick tip that I want to show you. Um, if you notice when I've done the cross method here, every time this value that I'm using to write in factored form is the same as this value that I got when I divided by 2. And that's going to happen every time just by design of how we are setting up or by the perfect square um, binomial that we have. So here, that 4 I got is the same as 8 over 2 divided by 4, and same thing in number 1 because that was the same numbers. So pause the video and try number 4 by yourself. And, and you don't have to do that shortcut, by the way, if it just feels like one more thing to remember. Just do that your cross, what multiplies to the last term and adds to the middle, and you'll be fine. So pause the video and try number four. Okay, here is my work for number four. Pause the video if you need to look at it longer. Other than that, we are done.